Welcome, everybody, to the next episode of LPF Debrief, where Chris just threw me off I'm sorry. because he missed the button. I did. But it's all right. We're back again to give you guys another debriefing. We are going to be debriefing today, episode one of Book of Boba. Finally, we're getting some Star Wars back, and Chris and I are both excited. You know who isn't excited, though? Yendi. Even though he made this great uh presentation that you guys are seeing yes this, yes the whole new look this. uh we uh, so i said we would half half shame i don't know how we're gonna do it no we're full shaming him still uh, for not oh, watching man. it because it's just an added up thing he's still <laughs> not watching the things that we watch he still hasn't watched spider-man yet so we're still going to full shame him but we are also going to be appreciative so we'll it'll be appreciative shame but it's still going to sound the same so okay shame shame <laughs> All right. And then before we get into it, guys, just like always, we are still doing this mouse giveaway. If you guys want in on it, please just sub. We are at 82 last time I checked. You know, still once 82. we hit 18 more, we will give away that mouse. We'll give away the instructions of how to do it. You Once we hit 100, we're there. So. Please do that. Tell a friend. Do all that good stuff. Like, subscribe, comment. If you guys agree with our opinions, if you disagree, let us know what you saw in the episode that you liked. We want to know that stuff too. So let us know what's going on. And of course, spoilers are going to be in this episode. So watch this first. If you don't care about spoilers, then keep watching. So Chris, episode one of Book of Boba. We got some Star Wars back. How you feel? I feel great. Mostly because Boba Fett is my favorite Star Wars character. Uh, way before freaking... He got cool? Book, yeah, way before he got cool. <laughs> I I was made fun of for Dude, liking Boba Fett. It's funny because... Bo- not, not, I'm not saying that like... So Boba has this like fan base that like... you When you really think about it, Boba in the first three movies, the original trilogy, doesn't show up that much. Nope. He just looked amazing and yep. everyone was like... Oh, that character's so cool. Yeah. I want to like him. So Why you like a character that falls and he dies to a food? Yeah. And now it's just like, Boba Fett is my hero. Yeah. And it's like, shut up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so. but I, uh, uh, funny enough, I think Dan actually said something to me once whenever he asked me my favorite character. I said Boba Fett before like all the Mandalorian stuff happened. And uh, he's like, why? <laughs> like, I mean, I to be do, fair, man. my favorite character in Star Wars wasn't even in any of the like, series until recently which Thrawn. was drawn yeah yeah so like he didn't show up officially until rebels uh yeah. spoiler but we did say spoilers but if you haven't watched rebels yet then i can't uh, yeah, yeah it's <laughs> too late for you <laughs> so but yeah so Thrawn, he, he was always he was my favorite character from the books mm. and i've just loved that character since and then the new books are even better than the older stuff and then i mean when he shows up in rebels i freaked out and He's supposed to be a showing up in Ahsoka, and I'm super excited. I can't it's wait to be see dope. they get to play him. Uh, but so. yeah, so favorite Star Wars character, and then I also got my favorite Disney princess. Also, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. Ming Nan Wen, love her to death, man. She's awesome as uh, Agent May, as Fennec, as Mulan. She's done a lot, and um, she's also awesome as a person. As a I person, had the yes. Of meeting her. At one of the cons, I think what I don't remember what year off the top of my head, but I met her at SuperCon and she was super sweet. She did like I think she did some free signings too. I think I have an Agents of Shield picture somewhere. Yeah, I want to meet her really but, bad, man. Yeah. She's the, she's, she's that person really when she hits the screen. I'm like ah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but it was awesome to see. Uh, I loved the music in this a lot. And if there is a Star Wars vinyl. For Mandalorian and Boba Fett, I will probably end up buying those. I'm going to start looking those up after the show. But um, I like the whole first episode as a whole of uh, basically the flashbacks of like, hey, let's, let's give you some quick reminders of who this guy is and 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 why he is why he is and um, how he got here. Because everybody was wondering, like, y- you got to show us how he survived. Because if we just go into this, <laughs> like, everybody's going to be like, how? How did he how does he make it? Um and it was really cool to see whenever I saw it, I was like, makes sense. Cool. Awesome. Um, I had some funny moments to myself. Uh, I am a big, or not a huge, I was a big robot chicken fan. I love robot chicken to death. I have the star robot chicken, star Wars DVDs. Uh, those were my favorite. I laughed a lot. And there was a special moment. Uh, I want to mention it now because I'm going to forget later on. 
Um, there's a moment where there's a blue elephant, right? And he has like a raspy voice. He's like, oh man, I got to get to my gig, man. And he crashes and it's by the Snarlack pit. And you hear Boba Fett in the pit and he asks him, he's like, hey man, can you throw me a rope or something? He's like, no nah, man, nobody here, man. I'm late to my gig. And he keeps going. So in this episode, you see the guy playing the piano and it's been, yeah. you see the blue elephant playing the piano and it's, I mean, it was an inside joke to me and my buddy where I sent him a screenshot of it. And I was like, he made it. He made it to the gate. He's finally there. Well, but, I mean, he's in the original. That's Max yeah, he Repo. Is. What is he's, it? He's ja- Max Repo. Max Repo. That's his name. Yeah. And he's actually in Jabba's hut. Yeah. Like, he plays music in Jabba's hut. So, so funny. It was nice that he uh, found a new place to play music. <laughs> And I mean, they were funky too. Yeah, that, that's one thing about the canteens in Star Wars. That music is funky. Well, they be playing I liked how stuff. the cantina music was. Uh, it had a Latin. They put a Latin mm-hmm. feel to yeah. it, so it was still the cantina music, but in mm-hmm. Latin. And I was like, "This is yeah. fantastic! I love they, this so they, much." They do it up. They <laughs> yeah. do it up. Yeah, but uh, overall, love the episode. It's a good first episode. Uh, like I said, it was just mostly a recap, and uh, I enjoyed it. I was, I, I'm happy to see that he's back and we're going to get more of Boba Fett. But what did you think of it? Uh, Same thing. It was a good first episode. It was good to clear up because for a long time, that was the rumor. Like, obviously we, especially if you had been watching the Mandalorian already, you knew that he came back, but we never knew exact. We, they never told us how he came back. We just saw him and was like, Oh look, Boba's back. So it was nice to see the, you know, him actually escaping the Sarlacc pit where it's like, oh, okay, that's cool. Like, this is what happened. This is how he got out. Like, because it made sense to him taking the stormtroopers breathing to be able to breathe because we saw him get blown up. Like, essentially, like, lose all capability of his suit when he went in there and stuff. So it was definitely nice to see uh, something that the fans had always thought and always, like, theorized, I guess. Is that the word? I don't even know if that's a word. But... It was nice to see that, and then it finally happened. And then, I mean, he, we saw some more <laughs> what, what he went through afterwards. Like, you know what I mean? With the the Jawas taking his stuff and taking his suit, which makes sense because when we saw it in The Mandalorian, and like, you know what I mean? Just, they have no chill, man. Yeah, <laughs> they just, they're, listen, they're here for that money, and they don't care what is going on. If you got something that seems valuable, they are here to take it. So it was, it was, it was good to see, you know, just all the struggle that he had to go through in order to actually come back and, and be, and then be with the Tuscans and them, um, that, that whole, like not knowing what was going on and then trying to escape, which was great with the, I forget what the, the, those that little, race the is called. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I know what the race is called. I'm talking about the, uh, the animal thing, whatever he, what the thing the, when he was guard trying dog to escape, looking thing? Yeah, 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 the little okay. guard dog. But uh, he just, it was funny when he's just like trying to like escape and then he's like getting them closer, but he reeled them in. So it was really cool to see like Boba do all that, that, that stuff. And just, it's nice to be able to finally get like dive into Boba's character. And I, and I think that's the thing that excites me the most about the series is that we're going to get like a good amount of Boba to actually like, you know, care about. And, you know, Finnick is just great. Like you said. She's just fantastic. <laughs> she's like, the speed. She's in. I've noticed that she's yeah. the speed person of mm-hmm. of the duo because uh, yeah. you know Boba Fett's gone through a lot. His body's gone through a lot. He's older, and you see that. Um, but this episode really does show, like, no, he's still a badass. Because whenever he's like, whenever he's tied up in that moment yeah. that you're talking about, and he's like, as soon as he scratches, he's and the mm-hmm. the thing notices him. Yeah. He's like. Gives him the okay. eyes and it's just yeah. like, all right. And then keeps going anyway. Yeah. And then it gets up to like, it like, you know, keep intimidating him. And he's like, no, I'm going to keep going. <laughs> so, yeah. But when he brings no. him in, I was like, yeah, this is what I want. <laughs> yeah. And the, you know, he, and then it's great because he's with the whole Tuscan race and they don't yeah. know exactly like they, you know, they don't even speak the same language nope. and he's just trying to get, you know, get out. And then he gets into the fight <laughs> with, the, I forget. Uh, he gets into that fight. Uh, and then with that big monster that looked what great, is actually. that? Yeah, that's, I, that, I, that's a new. I, I'm I may be mistaken, but I don't remember reading about that. But I don't. I'm not sure because I haven't read everything. But I don't know if that's like a brand new monster. But I don't remember it in the Star Wars yeah. universe like as much like as much as like the books I've read and stuff. I don't seeing how excited they got it. when he, they bring the head back. Yeah, it made it seem like okay, this thing's been 
yeah, pain in the ass for a while, yeah, yeah for, for them. Mm-hmm. So. And that's a, just a thing, you know, and it's also part of, like, you know, the Tutskins are, are very, um, they're very, like, <clears throat> tribal, like, that's like a... And then he was a little, it was a little kid, right? So yeah. it's basically like, this is like a badge of honor. And you could see even towards the end of the episode when he does that and Boba gets the, like, he's like, gives him, like, I guess whoever their captain or their leader is gives Boba a drink because it's like, you know, damn, that's like, we know you did it. Like, we know he didn't just, you know, so I thought that was cool. And it's just, again, my favorite thing about Star Wars is we can now explore different stories. And I always said that having these as TV shows would make so much more sense because you can explore this world that is so gigantic way better. Like you can have the characters that we love, but we can put them in different journeys. Like we don't need to make everything about the Skywalkers, but it's also nice when we throw like you throw a little salt in there and it, they come in, you know what I mean? Yeah. But you can expand this universe to so far that you don't need to like limit it with those move with the movies. And I think as a success of all these shows go with where we just had, you know, we had Mandalorian, which people loved. We had this show, we had um, bad batch, like, you know what I mean? And then we had the new season of uh, clone wars. Like it shows that we don't need movies in order for star Wars to live on. And I feel like we're just going to get more of that with this show also. Yeah. It's a, uh... Also, the time it takes to explain the, the 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 other characters that we see. So whenever you're talking about the Raiders and everything like that, uh, you know, a lot of people I know for their their fur that don't follow as much Star Wars, they're gonna think, okay, so why did Boba Fett walk back with them instead of run and stuff like that? And it's a if you know them, it's a whole that whole tribe. The whole tribe is about respect. So yeah. you they very they explore that in Mandalorian. They have a moment where it's just like, hey, if you push them. If you push them, they're going to attack and that's it. Yeah. Like you're not going to build that relationship. It's all a respect thing. And Boba Fett knew that. So whenever he comes back, he knew that he gained, he's gaining the trust of the tribe. And that's the only way to survive is, is going to be the only way he's going to be able to survive. Especially in that desert, right? Yeah. Because they, they're, they're very adaptive to that, like to the tat, like to that Tatooine, mm-hmm. like lifestyle and the sun and all that stuff. So them you know they know and he's in the middle of nowhere he doesn't know where he is he doesn't have a suit or anything so like you said he does need to know like he does need to weigh weigh his options and figure out exactly what's going on and for that to happen and then him to finally get some respect and get the water and stuff you can tell that this is going to lead into some more stories and we'll see what happens and i think the first episode was a good pace a good way to get us back in because i don't i mean bad batch I don't even remember when that ended, but it feels like we've gone months without any like Star Wars stuff. Like it feels, it feels really long. So yeah, it's, it's uh, a good introduction to get back in. And like with the whole tribute thing, I thought was cool where they were just bringing him stuff. And then the yeah. mayor being like, <laughs> no, oh, he was like, oh wait, he's expecting a tribute. And he's, he's like, he's Finnick's like, I'm like, the crime boss. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, he's like, I'm the cr-. And then Finnick is like, should I kill him? Like, just like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's just it's it's going to be a good i think it's the that duo is going to be a lot of fun to just go on the adventure with and i'm excited i'm not sure i didn't check how many episodes this is going to have but i'm I'm definitely excited especially because we're going to have a long break from marvel Mm -hmm. so it's nice to get uh, another fandom that we love (laughs) very dearly back to back man it feels so good it's just like feels good hopefully by the by the time this ends we get another show yeah but who knows yeah Uh, i also liked uh the attention to detail of um i I mean i love the outfits man i i am going to get at some point i will get a stormtrooper like armor set i want boba fett's like actual helmet like i I want that stuff um but also i was gonna say at the end of the episode you see how beaten up he is whenever he takes that drink of water i don't know if you look at his chest you see like the sun blistering like the skin's peeling everything that he's been through to, to to survive out there um also in the beginning when he's in the chamber uh, what is that chamber called? Um, is, you bought it's the the bak, bak tub tank. Okay, bak- so what does that do exactly? Does that just help him it just heals recover? Him. Okay, like, yeah, it's like a healing thing. Yeah, so seeing them, uh, seeing the flashback, of, what, even from um, Clone Wars, when he's, I, I was very surprised to see that. I'm glad they they showed that actual clip of him holding the helmet, and I'm sure we're gonna see more of. Uh, I would love to see his time in the Clone Wars. Uh, um animated series come to life if we saw like little clips of him growing up and stuff like that i think that'd be pretty cool um 
but yeah, seeing well, what else did I what I want want to talk about the Gamorian guards. I mm-hmm. like that Gamorian guard. We're getting more of those guys. They look awesome. I feel like they've lost weight, which is fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed that, but Listen, whenever sometimes you go, you know, you go you, you you're in the sun, you're gonna lose a yeah. shed a couple of pounds. They yeah. look great. Good job, guys. <laughs> but um. When they get attacked and they're all fighting, and I was like, "Where are the guards at?" Like Gamorian guard, because they as a gr- growing up, even playing the games and stuff like that. If you saw a Gamorian guard, you were scared. You're like, "This thing is gonna destroy me." I gotta get away from it. It was awesome. So seeing them come back is is pretty cool, and them helping Boba Fett get into the chamber, I thought was really cool. They're like, "I don't know what to like." They throw them in there and they put the mouth at guard in. They look at each other like, hey, "Is that it? We're good." <laughs> so. Yeah. It- yeah. So yeah, overall it was such a good episode. Yeah, it was I, like fun. Said, it was a good, nice start and point. I am interested to see where we're gonna go and where we're gonna end because, like, it's kind of like you know, because this is one of the things. The this is one of those stories that I love because we don't know what's gonna happen, right? Like, we don't have an idea of what happens to Boba, and this is why I like we. I don't even think we have like a guarantee of where the time frame is set because if I'm correct that uh Mandalorian was between four and is between three and four or six and seven. I think it's between six and seven. So I think we're around that time frame. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken. I'll look it but, up while you keep talking about it. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're between I, I want to say we're between six and seven. So at some point well no, because Ahsoka shows up. Uh no, yep, yep. Yep, we're definitely between six. It says um, the Mandalorian takes place in nine ABY, nine years after A New Hope. So, and interestingly, okay, so five years after the Emperor's defeat in The Return of the Jedi. That's, yeah, so we're between six. Yeah, <laughs> we're between six and seven. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We don't know exactly what happens to Boba because we didn't see him in the sequel trilogy. So we can go anywhere from here. And that's like I said earlier, that's what I love about this is that we can open up this world into something that we haven't seen. And now it's not predictable anymore. So whatever happens here, we're going to be like, Oh, and it gives you that sense of danger. Like, you know what I mean? There's a sense of like, Oh, he might not make it out of here. Who knows? Like, yeah, he's the, the, the hero of the story, but still, you don't, I like having a little bit of not knowing what his next thing is going to happen or what's going to happen next because then you can do like a, a death scene or someone can be lost because we don't know what's going to happen. It's I think it's going to be really cool to see too cuz uh you can already see with the show or we're definitely going to be in present day and uh in the past of like his survival to get to where he is. So it's going to be kind of cool how he meets uh Fennec. I I, I wonder if they're going to show some Mandalorian pieces in there like right. uh uh, cause you know, in the, what is it? First episode of season two, we see him at the end. Right. So yeah. maybe leading up to that point of him seeing his armor, like what happened just before he got to that point to see him. So I think it's going to be really cool what they can do here. Um, it's going to be crazy, man. I'm, I'm going to love it either way. Boba Fett, like I said, deserved his time and he got it. Yeah. Um, Again, it's free range at this point because yeah. they can they can do anything. Yeah. And and I mean the people who are in charge of this we are, are trusted. And like I said, John Favreau and Dave Filoni are just literally in control of the Star Wars universe. And that's it. Let them be the Kevin Feige of Star Wars. They just need let them do whatever they want. They need to authorize be be the ones who authorize what happens next in the story. And that's it. That there doesn't need to be anyone else. Get everyone's else hands out of there. If your name is not Dave Filoni or John Favreau, you cannot make any Star Wars decisions with the story. Period. And that's how the way we can keep it. And if we can keep it this way, we will continue to get these shows and these, you know, and hopefully maybe five years like down the line, we set up a good enough to get a story, like a, get a, another movie. But as, like I said, creative control has to go through those two. If we can get there, I think that was one of the things that hindered Star Wars, especially with the sequel trilogy, is that there was just too many people, too many hands in there. And that's why we got what we got. So I think if we can just keep it with them, we will be fine. Um, Do you think, I wanted to get your predictions on, like, do you have any characters that you think we might see or people that you want to see? There's only as of right now. Because I feel like only, we might have the same. I have one, but you might. 
there's only one, and it's the Tuscan Raider that could possibly be a care uh be Darth Crate, which is like a very like under like it's kind of like a low key character. But I I don't know if I can see anyone else. But I it might because the Darth Crate story for those who don't know, he is a human that was raised by the Tuscan Raiders. So maybe. And then he becomes a Sith Lord. So we will see. I don't think that, but that's my only, my like wild prediction as okay. of right now. I was thinking more of uh, what's, um, what's Darth, Darth Maul should be out of this by now or no? Because I'm thinking of the, is it yeah. Black Suns or something like that? Well, Darth, Darth Maul technically should be dead. Okay, never mind then. Well, I mean, he should, well, again, should be dead. But I'm not sure because I'm thinking about because if, uh, if we technically no Darth Maul's not Darth Maul's dead he has to be because he dies in clone he Wars. creates some no yeah yes he does well yeah well, I've been saying he dies then we see him again rebels in we rebels. see him in rebels then we see him die in, in rebels. rebels okay but yeah then, so he would be out yeah but then also <laughs> if you count Solo. That's we what I'm saying. Yeah, so, but you and he talks about that that clan that he's running. Yeah. So I'm just uh, like wondering. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe. I don't know. But I don't think he. I don't think he's in it. I think it's too too late. I again. I don't know. Uh, that's the thing with Solo. I forgot where Solo's time frame is. Also, because it's before he gets the Millennium Falcon, which is sometime before four. But is it after Rebels? Is the thing because I don't remember. Because I. In Rebels, I know for sure that <laughs> Darth Maul can die. <laughs> because what Obi-Wan does to him in Rebels... If he guys said, I, I, Rebels, I need to make sure yeah, this ends. And it was, like, <laughs> it was very clear what happened. So I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say that he's dead, but who knows? <laughs> who knows? I, 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 who knows? Because, I mean, technically, Boba's been dead for X amount of years, right? So who knows? Hopefully, right. Darth Maul is dead, though. Yeah. Uh, as much as I love the character, it will kind of like minimize what happened in Rebels, and I don't want that to happen because it was really cool. But yeah, uh, let's do the same way we ended all the time. What was your favorite moment in the episode? Oh, this is rough. Um, I'm going to say that moment where they're they're getting the offerings. Um, That's mine, too. Because I, the moment that he has with Fennec is, is she's... She's very like, just kill the person and get it over with. And you see, if you kept up with the series and everything like that, Boba Fett had a rage issue because he wanted, all he wanted to do was avenge his father. That's it. Mm -hmm. Somebody killed his dad. He wanted to get there and, and, and and show the world what that family was. Um, But you see the, the, the patience and the respect that he gets. So whenever, every time Fennec was, you know, like, oh, let's just get rid of this person. He was just like, no, let's wait because you got to think about it. This person is part of this head person. Yeah. We don't want trouble with that. So we yeah. need respect here. So even mm -hmm. it hurt him going into the bar with the helmet uh, and they were like, can we clean your helmets? He's like, hey, in order to, you know, if we're going to live here, we got to get used to their ways. So mm -hmm. uh, it, it was just really cool to see that moment with them. And it was a funny moment, too, uh, because of how confusing, especially the first offering when he's sitting there and he's like, yeah. you get that? And she's like, something yeah. about friendship. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> well, he was speaking a lot. And then they were talking about getting the, the, the translated droid. droid so. <laughs> but yeah, it was um, my favorite moment was that too. And just him saying like um, being back in, in being back on Tatooine and being in the city and just saying that he doesn't want to run it through fear like Jabba did. He wants to run it like with respect. So you can tell that respect is going to be a big thing and that's why again in the end of the episode when he gets that level of respect that's kind of what you can tell that's where he's going to kind of go we'll see what happens if he gets there and is able to still make those monies and and do all those things and be a bounty hunter and have the respect so yeah i'm really excited to see what happens next so yeah man but that i, I agree with you that was my favorite yeah. <laughs> uh, like just that whole thing was great so all right guys again this is our first episode of Debrief for Boba Fett. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Like, sub, do all that stuff. We are still doing that mouse giveaway. So please let it help us get to 100. 
And then once we do that, we can give away something else once we get there. So also, guys, remember, every Tuesday we are doing our live show. So check us out on the YouTube and the Twitch. If you guys want to get our live content, we will be doing that. And then Chris and I will have some other debriefs coming on. But we are going to give you guys this one weekly for sure as the show until the show is done. And then whatever happens next. But we have some good ideas for the for the end of the year that we're we're going to talk about it, obviously they're going to come out next year but they're going to be for <laughs> for <laughs> for year 2021 and then we'll do some 2022 things that i just thought about today that i haven't told chris and look you guys knew before chris did look at that so thank you guys for joining us that is going to be it for us today fire team out <laughs>